PaperPal is a way of streamlining your academic writing and writing your papers for journal submissions. So this is what happens when you log in. When you log in, you get uh, this interface. And there are two ways that you can use PaperPal. The first way is with a new web document, which opens it up online. And then you've got the in-store Microsoft Word add-in. I prefer to use it in Microsoft Word because it gives me access to other tools like Zotero and other referencing managers that I happen to use in Word. However, if you do click on this new web document, it will create a new web document for you. You can still access all of the features of PaperPal in here. It's a little bit cleaner than Word because you don't have the ribbons and all that sort of stuff. But here we have where you start writing text. And on this side, you'll see where PaperPal pops up. So that's what it looks like in the web version. Now, if I open up Word, this is what it looks like. So the first thing you need to do is install PaperPal into Word. Now, if you go to home, up here you've got add-ins. If you click add-ins and then you click add more add-ins, you can go and search for PaperPal and you click add when it's up there. I'll do that for you, PaperPal. Here it is, add. So you click add and then you'll get this. And you can see that the layout is very similar to the online version of PaperPal, where you have the writing in Word. So this is where you start. Now, if I head over to the um, PaperPal interface, you've also got a range of other things here. We've got plagiarism check-in, which we'll talk about later, which is actually powered by Turnitin, which is brilliant if you don't have access to Turnitin through other sources like your institution. And also you get this really interesting submission check. So stay around because I'll be showing you what it's like with one of my papers that I've submitted in the past and I was surprised how bad my submission really was. I'm amazed it got accepted based on this submission check. It's really, really useful if you're in the pointy end of submission. So let's give this a go. I'm going to go into the new document that I've just created. Now, here's the thing. If you are just someone who wants to start writing, that is brilliant because as you start writing, it will give you suggestions on how to make your paper and your research writing better. However, if you don't know where to start, you can start generating text. And this is a new feature as Copilot has been recently released. So I want to click here, um, generate an outline for research article or you can click up here which was paper pal copilot and you've got a number of things if you've already got writing you can rewrite stuff you can paraphrase trim or make academic which essentially is just make it boring and more technical i think and then you've got generate and then you've got ask so generate is where most people I think will want to start if they've got a blank um, canvas. We can go to outlines and let's have a look. We've got research article, case report, essay, and statement of purpose. So let's click on research article and it gives us this sort of like prompt so that it can start generating text appropriate for what you want to write. The first thing is introduction. Let's have a look at introduction. I'm going to in the physical sciences and I want transparent electrodes for um, flexible OPV devices using... All right, how did that go? That was not too bad. Normally, I'm very bad at typing. You need a minimum of 10 words. So uh, transparent electrodes for flexible OPV devices using solution processing techniques. Ha <laughs> ha I'm a genius. <laughs> One extra word and we're in. Okay, generate. And then what will happen is, is the um, co-pilot will generate just this structure for you. The one thing I like about this is that it does create just like the prompts you need to generate the introduction rather than just like, here's the full introduction. You'll see what I mean when we take a look at this uh, result. So we'll let it sort of uh, bumble its way through. Blah, 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 blah. Then you get this. You can say, yeah, just insert it into what I was writing, or you can also ask it to regenerate if you're not happy with it. I'm happy with it, so let's click insert. And then look at all this. We've got background, topic importance, existing knowledge. These are the sections and structure of a typical introduction in the physical sciences space. That means that it's not just sort of like giving you the text to copy and paste, but it's saying, hey, this is the sort of thing that we should be talking about in the order that needs to be talked about for submission, which I absolutely absolutely love. It's really, really easy because then you can go and go in and just sort of like worry about each little section at a time, little by little, build up 
the stuff, which is great. So I can then go in and start fleshing this out with my own words, which is fantastic. So let's go back and have a look now. Now we've got some stuff in there. We can have a look at this, which is language. The language section will give us recommendations, kind of like um, Grammarly does, where it says this could be a little bit better, which is brilliant for English as a second language students because we can click on this and then we say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna accept them all or I'm gonna click on this and let's have a look. At the moment, this is saying, hmm, Andy, it's not quite right, it could be better. So then I go on here and I say, yeah, accept those two changes. So revolutionize to revolutionize um, and solar energy is harness instead of we harness energy. I'll accept that. And then you just go through and you accept or you reject you accept or you reject, and that's essentially it. And uh, it is just a really great way of making sure that your writing can be the best it can be. And then we've got synonyms. Synonyms, if you highlight a word, we will suggest academic synonyms. Let's have a look. I'm gonna have a look at photovoltaic technology. Let's see what it says about that. Then it's gonna go away and look for synonyms for that. So that's if you're using, you know, the same word over and over again, and you'd be like, you know what? I can do a little bit better than this. Let's see if there's any synonyms. No. <laughs> No synonyms for photovoltaic found. Okay, fair enough, but there we are. You could potentially use it if it was suitable for you. Translation, we can also translate into different uh, uh, languages if you need to. And then we've also got this at the end, consistency, where it checks your language for consistency. I would use these suite of tools as uh, I was sort of like preparing for submission, getting to, through that sort of like first rough draft, then I'd put it into this. I wouldn't like this to be used while I was um, writing the first draft, because I think it's just a little bit too distracting. Get all of the information out of your brain and then start refining it, because jumping backwards and forwards for me means that uh, I just get distracted and I get sort of like trying to polish things when in fact it should be sort of like the brain dump part of the writing process. This is great for the next step. So you can ask it questions. In Copilot, you can just be like, hey, uh, what is the right way of speaking to my supervisor? You can ask it anything you want. So over here, how should I approach my professor to propose a research idea? Let's click on that and see what it says. So. This is not just for writing now. The co-pilot opens up the door to getting academic sort of advice and allowing you to kind of just navigate academia that little bit easier. Really great. So here we are. Here's what it says you can do. And uh, it's generally a little bit too lackluster because it doesn't know the ins and outs of academia, but it does give you a great place to start thinking about how to approach the issues you're having. So. Let's make academic. Let's say I want to take this and I'm going to go to Copilot. I'm going to say make academic. I'm going to click there and see what it says. Let's make something super, super academic. The literature provides a limited perspective on the application of solution process methods for the manufacturer. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. It just makes it a little bit more boring, I think. <laughs> now, the same thing applies if you're using it in Word. This is a Word document of a, an abstract that I was um, creating, and so I can go to Open Paper Pal, and then you get all of the same functionalities you had on the web version in Word, which I absolutely love. This is where I probably would do most of my writing because I've also got Zotero here and I can just sort of like do so much in one space. So once again, you get all of the language, the synonyms, the, lang the uh, translation and the consistency check along the top and you can put Copilot in Word. Brilliant. I love having all the AI tools in one space. So here we are, click on Copilot. Then we've got rewrite again. We've got generate and ask. So this is my abstract. Let's see what else I've got in generate. This is kind of a cool little thing. So I've done outlines. Let's say that I actually want a title for this paper. I don't really know what it is at the moment. I'm gonna click title. I'm gonna say generate. Based on the text I've put in, it will generate a title suggestion. So here we are, addressing the degradation mechanisms. Yeah, I like that, I like that. Let's click up here and put that in, insert. Oh, that was so easy. Okay, I've got a title. And the one thing I like about this generate thing is it is all of the little boring stuff that quite often just 
sucks up loads of your time for no reason. Keywords. Let's have a look at all of the keywords I could potentially use. That will quite often uh, take up a load of time here. It's very, very easy. It's going to scan my text and let's put in the keywords. Here's the keywords it thinks that should be in this document. Blink, blink, blink. Good. I'm going to insert those. There we are. There's some key words that people could be searching for that could help them find this paper. A simple click of a button and we get those. Study highlights. Let's have a look at study highlights. So all of these things quite often just take up so much time. Now they're just at the click of a button. Oh, must include 500 words of text from your paper. Okay, fair enough. Can't do that one. I'm not going to write any more. And let's have a look at a bit of a summary. Let's see if I can generate a summary. No, nope, need another one. So these are um, all of the different tools you can get if you've got loads of text in there. Um, you can also actually email and email the journal, which is really cool. So write a cover letter, inquire about the status, ask for an extension. All of these things are very, very sort of like procedural and common in academia. And now it's pretty much all done for you, which is great. It's getting rid of all of those boring admin tasks. Blech. Take the admin tasks away from me. Paper Pal goes so much further than what we've just talked about here. On the left hand side here, we've also got a few other things. So not just for writing, but also for manuscripts, plagiarism check and submission check. So I put in one of my papers, review papers that I was planning to publish. I never actually published it, but this is what it says about my plagiarism check. So I put it in and luckily, you know, this was written years and years before AI. And you can see that overall, we've got a similarity of 11%, which is fantastic. So that tells me that, uh, yeah, this is uh, suitable for publishing and submission to a journal. I love this because actually it's Turnitin that is the powerhouse behind this check. So that is exactly what is being used in industry, in universities, in colleges. So this will give you an idea of that score. Brilliant. And the last thing that just before you're getting ready to submit your work, you do have to do all of these checks and it can get really, really frustrating because you're like, oh, I just want to submit this. But now you can actually just say, okay, do the submission check for me. And you click here, submission check, and then you can put in your manuscript file just before you're about to submit it, just to see if you can improve it and make sure you don't get desk rejected. Desk rejected is when an editor receives your paper and goes, oh, boring no and then just says no right away doesn't send it out to the reviewers we can help minimize that so i put in one of my manuscripts and this is what happened um, it gives you all of these critical issues based on metadata disclosures counts figures and tables references that language so this is quite an old paper so you can see here you've got too many old references references with no citations Oops. So this tells me these are all the things I should be looking at if I'm interested in submitting this paper to a journal. Now I can download the full edited document, which I'm going to do right now. And this is what you get. This is so valuable and completely worth it if you're about to submit your journal. So you get all of this kind of table summary of what's wrong and what you need to improve. But this is what I really like here. This is where it tells you um, all of the things that it thinks you should change. Now I put in this paper because it was already in the format that the journal article wanted it in. And you can see it navigated the columns really well. And it's given me loads of suggestions on the different spelling and grammatical changes it would make but it also has comments so this section down here which is the submission check is in my opinion completely worth it it checks all of these things go check it out if you like this video go check out this one where i talk about how to use consensus ai for your research don't be left behind